Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby and have ourselves a drink. All right, and Michaela is singing, so that means we are back in the lobby bar for the week of April the 8th, 2024. Brian and Michaela here with you, and happy Eclipse Day, Michaela, if you're listening to this to the day that it came out, there was an eclipse uh, in a large part of the country. Uh, how are you doing? Are you watching the sun? What do you think? I'm trying not to burn a you know, hole into my cornea. Uh, apparently, uh, you're not supposed to be looking at the sun, just like, like a normal day. You don't look at the sun. Don't look True. at it now either. Uh, so if you're going to do that or if you've done it, I hope you did it safely. Um, my dad made this really cool like picture box thing when I was a kid um, looking at it then. And I, I think that's mm -hmm. the best way to do it. It makes you feel like you're living in the 1940s. It's kind of cool. Um, and it's safe on the old eyeballs. But I, I do wonder, you know, back in the days of old, uh, like in, I don't know, 1080 AD, which is uh, when the movie that we're going to talk about this week occurred, what people thought of the eclipse, where people were like walking around and they were like, oh my God, the sky is falling. Or were they just like, it's it's going to be weird for about four minutes and 14 seconds and then it's going to be <laughs> fine. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how people reacted. Uh, we might have looked at the same uh, eclipse. If you look at the trajectory this year for the eclipse, it goes over uh, both of our uh, previous homes. It goes like over Houston and up through Ohio. Um, and yeah, I remember uh, doing that same kind of thing uh, in elementary school. We did like a little like shoebox thing where you made a little hole into it and you can kind of see like the reflection of it inside of there. Yes. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty fun to do, Michaela. But you know what is more fun than poking a hole into a shoebox? That is having a good cocktail to celebrate uh, the eclipse. And uh, I figured what better thing to do than to look up some Corona cocktails. Uh, you know, Corona, the beer. Uh, also, Corona is the outside edge of the sun. When you look at the sun, that is called the Corona, the outside edge of it there. Uh, it's where it takes its name from. And I said, we need a cocktail with that in it for sure. So let's make up a Corona Sunrise. This is easy. It's going to be good for summer. Uh, it's going to be good to have while you're watching the eclipse for like a minute. The whole country lost its mind over this uh, eclipse thing today. So let's get this uh, cocktail going. So one and a half ounces of tequila, one ounce of grenadine, and two ounces of orange juice. Uh, go ahead and put that into a glass with some ice. Uh, it's just a typical... Uh, tequila sunrise except you're going to go ahead and add in about i don't know six or so ounces of corona uh into that and that's going to lighten it up a little bit give you a nice kind of beer cocktail and it's going to be refreshing uh and delicious you know especially if you're standing outside in the sun i uh, got your little uh blackout sunglasses on ready to go what do you think about a corona sunrise michaela i love a good beer cocktail um i, I don't know how you feel about corona and cor versus corona extra um I, I kind of like Coronas. I, they, they definitely put a lime the straight into vibe. it. And that tells me yeah. all I need to know about it, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not for you. <laughs> but um, I like it. I think it's exciting uh, to change up the tequila sunrise a little bit. Um, I had no idea that the Corona, that that was the definition of the circumference of the sun that mm, you see mm. during an eclipse. That's that's really exciting. Um, yeah. Not to be concerned, confused with the cornea, which is something that will burn uh, <laughs> really horribly if you look at the sun. So don't do that. Um, but no, this is really good. And if you don't have a corona and you want to do something else, um, I uh, was thinking that this would even be good with like a wheat beer, um, kind of like a okay. blue moon or even like a white zombie Um Mm -hmm. something that's got like because the orange tones into it so um and i don't have any corona so i went ahead and used a uh, half of a blue moon and it actually tasted really refreshing um yep. and, and the it had the zestiness with the orange juice in it really good yeah that sounds really delicious um really delicious and uh you know if that's not your jam maybe you get up to some more cocktails uh speaking of sun we were on our spring breaks uh last week michaela you were able to go to the beach uh i stayed uh i stayed in town and uh got into some uh pretty good drinks myself made a day trip to Asheville, so checked out a few breweries but you were uh beachside did you have anything good to go with the sun and the sand uh down yeah. the atlantic ocean way yeah so um, I was with my girl, Sheena, and we were drinking a lot of Prosecco, um, which made me think I should make like a Prosecco forward Huckleberry Martini because I love Huckleberries. You know this. Um, I had one last bottle of my 360 Huckleberry flavor vodka, which is amazing. And so um, what I did was went ahead and made up a, kind of a Huckleberry Martini with a 
Prosecco floater. Um, and that mm. was really good. So I took an ounce and a half of huckleberry flavored vodka. I added half an ounce of elderflower because you do. Um, then I added half an ounce of simple syrup and put that into a shaker tin, shook that up, put it into a very, very chilled coupe glass, and then just floated the top of that stuff with some Prosecco. Um, it didn't look as pink and beautiful as I wanted it to. So I made another one, but I added an ounce of cranberry juice, which gave it a little bit more like it, ga it gave it a nice pink, like purpley look blush. to it. And it also, yeah. yeah, made it made it more blushy, which is good because the vodka that I had um, was infused, but it didn't have any of the color of it. So I did both of those and they were both delicious and I recommend them. Well, that sounds very good. That sounds very good. Well, uh, while you were out doing that, I was, uh, again, I, I stayed home. I uh, saved the day trip to Asheville, which was very nice. Uh, I spent my week uh, getting our merchandise store going. So anyone out there who has been interested in getting some Drink the Movies merchandise, uh, I'm glad to say, happy to say, you can go do that now. We'll have a link to it um, in the show description, but it's just drinkthemovies.square.site. You can go and look. We've got a sweatshirt on there. We've got uh, a coffee mug, hat, uh, you know, a couple things. We're getting some more samples in, uh, so we'll be adding some stuff here over the next couple of weeks. But go check that out if you're interested in uh, repping some Drink the Movies gear. That would be uh, awesome to check out, or at least let us uh, know what you think, or if you have any ideas for other merchandise you'd like to see, send us that uh, our way. Send it over all the things. So let us know uh, what you think about that, and let us know what you thought about the uh, new releases this week. We had Monkey Man uh, and the First Omen, both uh, new releases this week, uh, but could not dethrone Godzilla and Kong. I don't know who is the real king uh, there in that one, but Godzilla versus Kong, X Kong times Kong, uh, 31 and a half million dollars again this week. So doing really, really good there. Uh, Michaela, last week we talked about Ghostbusters 2 on our main show. That was a really fun time going back to revisit the uh, classic Ghostbusters movie. And we talked over on Patreon about Frozen Empire. That's patreon.com slash drink the movies if you want to get uh, bonus uh podcast episodes, uh, cocktail chats, all that good stuff. We did that over there. That was a really fun time going back and talking Ghostbusters, but you know what else is a good time? That's, uh, I don't know, winning the war for Marcus Aurelius and then uh, getting cast <laughs> into the uh, Gladiator Society like uh, like Ridley Scott's going to have uh, Russell Crowe do this week, Michaela. Gladiator, we're That's talking right. that. What do you think? Looking forward to it? I am looking forward to it. It's been probably 25 years since I've seen, oh, it can't be. It's 24 years since I've seen Gladiator, since it came out in 2000. Uh, mm. It's been a while. So I'm really excited to revisit it. Uh, am I not merciful? Um, it's got my boy, Joaquin Phoenix, in it. Uh, mm. He's mm -hmm. a man after mm -hmm. my own heart. And this is maybe the one time where I think he's odious and awful uh, because he plays he plays the, the baddie in it. It's so good. So I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, see some of the how it's changed or how it's grown in the last 24 years, if it's aged well, because Ridley Scott stuff, right? Like, you know, it's either going to be the best or it's going to be absolutely awful. There, there really is no in between <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes to the stuff that he creates, it's either like alien, alien-esque, right? Where it's like, this couldn't be any better. Or it's like, man, why did we ever think this was a good idea? Yeah, uh, this is for sure one of his best, and we're going to be talking about that on the main show this week, and uh, maybe a couple of movies here we're going to be talking about in the future. I don't know uh, for sure, but Michaela, I don't, I never even heard of this. I mean, I've heard of it because uh, this is a movie back from our childhood. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. A 1991 classic with uh, Christina Applegate. Uh, apparently, they're doing a remake of that here. It's coming out this week. Have you heard about this remake? Uh, no. <laughs> what are you? Are, are, no. are you excited? No. no. Let's move no. on. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I didn't even watch the original other than the fact that Christina what? Applegate looked super amazing in it. Um, she, she, she's just a beautiful human. Um, but no, I never even saw the original. So we, you can, you can admonish me for that later. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to chat about that offline, uh, for sure and see, uh, what's, <laughs> what, what's wrong with that situation right here. But there is one that I'm very excited about. Michaela, this is an A24 film. It's been getting a lot of hype. Um, got a lot of hype when they announced it and they released the trailer, but that is Civil War. It's coming from director and writer Alex Garland. And if you don't know who Alex Garland is, uh, he's written, uh, one of my favorite, uh, horror-esque films of all time, 28 Days Later. And he directed, uh, one of the most, uh, compelling films of the last, I'd say, um, I don't know, 10, 15 years and ex machina. So uh, looking forward to Civil War. Michaela, have you heard much about this? Have you been keeping an eye on it? Are you uh, looking forward to it? Do you also not know what this is? Like, don't tell mom the babysitter is dead. 
<laughs> no, I know what this is. I am actually really looking forward to it. I loved Ex Machina. Um, and I really had a lot of uh, feelings and thoughts about 28 Days Later. So I didn't know it was the same guy uh, who did it. So I'm I'm really excited. Um, this is not like a Civil War. Um, it's not a period. This is like a dystopian. It's, yeah, it's, it's not a period it's like a, piece. It's like a current it's, period piece. <laughs> right. Like, right. It's like, what happens now? <laughs> In about six months, what's going to happen to the world that we know? Yeah, um, for sure. Uh, it's yeah. got some amazing actors in it. I mean, once again, it's got Kirsten Dunst. It's got Jesse Plemons. They are like this dynamic duo that they have a life together. They have a, at least one kid together. Uh, they're in movies together. It's amazing. Nick Offerman's in it. He plays the president. I mean, how bad can this get? This is going to be amazing. That's right. Absolutely. Come for uh, President Nick Offerman and stay for the uh, Civil War. So uh, that's what we've got coming out this week. So uh, thank you so much for joining us here in this lobby bar. Hopefully you were able to catch the eclipse if you live in the part of the country uh, or at least the United States that's uh, catching catching that. Uh, let us know what you think about these films coming out this week and check out our merchandise shop. Again, it's drinkthemovies.square.site. Uh, go check that out and send us some feedback. We definitely appreciate that. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll talk to you next week in the lobby bar.